How you doing guys? Welcome back to my channel. I really appreciate you stopping by. If this is the first time you've stopped to my channel, thank you ever so much. Please hit the subscribe button and you'll stay up to date with any new videos. So this new video today is I wanted to show you why I moved from Lightroom to Capture One Pro. And the main reason I use is as a photographer, my style of shooting changed. So once upon a time, I used to be an event photographer and I am a Sony shooter and I used to use Lightroom. So Lightroom was the easiest way to be able to edit my images. But over time, I started to shoot more and more portrait, working with the artists that I was shooting previously at events. And as I started to work more and more with artists in a portrait manner, I wanted to use the best possible method to be able to shoot portrait. So tethering is, is obviously the best method to be able to do that. One, to make sure you're not staring for a really small screen, which I'll cover in another video. Um, and two, to break down the barrier of the camera. And three, if you start working on Digi and you start working with a team of editors and more of a, a support team behind you rather than just a photographer, you're gonna need that bigger screen to be able to do all those things. And to this day, Adobe does not support a direct tethering method with Sony cameras, which is crazy. Sony cameras over the last few years have been booming in popularity, and to this day, you still can't tether directly into Lightroom. And even the solution that there is to tether into Lightroom, it's not tethering, you're basically running an auto import. So you'll pop the files into one folder and Lightroom will extract those files from it. I'm gonna cover those today. So what I'm gonna show you is basically how you would tether using Capture One Pro 11 1.1 and how you would tether using Lightroom. The first one I'm gonna cover is gonna be Capture One Pro 11 1.1. So you can see I'm recording on this camera here so you can see the screen. You've got my camera. It's connected via a tether tech cable. Very straightforward. So all I'm gonna do is close this down, head over to Capture One Pro. It's gonna ask me what I want to do. now. I've got a startup window as well, which covers the new 11.1 .1 upgrade, which is the resource hub. So I don't want to use that at the moment. But as soon as I load it up, the first option is do I want to start a new catalog or do I want to run a session? Now, sessions are exactly that. They're sessions. They're basically shoot by shoot. So for me, it's already easier to manage my catalog because I haven't got one complete catalog and have to subdivide it. Basically, I just run a session. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go click run new session, click that. It's gonna ask me where I want it to go and I can either choose on the computer or on a hard drive. For me, when shooting tethered, I'll always shoot to a hard drive. So I click OK. Uh, already exists, yeah, so I'm gonna choose another one. Test folder. Fantastic, and that's it. So Lightroom is ready to go. Now, in terms of running tethered, I'm just gonna take an image as you can see, I've done nothing to this point, and it's importing. It's as simple as that. And that is the reason I moved, because it is so, so, so simple. If you want to do it with Lightroom, the issue comes is because there isn't a direct import method for Sony shooters, is you have to download a third party bit of software. So that is called ImageEd. It's available on the Sony website. So you download that and that acts as a go between between your Sony camera and Lightroom. So it's basically a translator. Now the problem with that is there are more links in the chain. The more links there are, the, the more risk there is. So as opposed to Capture One Pro, it moves directly into the software. With this method, you have to have somebody translating it. And that somebody, nine times out of 10, will become problematic and there will be issues. So it stops and you have to restart it. And it's a real, real, real pain. So I'm gonna go through the process of downloading for Mac. I'll fast forward all this bit so you don't have to go through the hardship of doing it. This is where it gets really complicated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a screen record and we need a library to obviously work from. So the easiest way, what we're gonna do is we're going to create a library on our desktop. We're gonna name it Auto Import. import LR. Cool, now we've got that. So we go back into Lightroom, and we're gonna go File, Auto Import, Enable Auto Import, 
and then we're going to go to auto import settings so we're going to choose where we're working from and we're going to choose that folder on the desktop Got ya. so that's created and we're ready to go now we are then going to use this piece of software that we just downloaded remote I think this is the one camera is not connected okay so turn on my camera give it a few seconds we'll click OK let's go into that uh, on your camera cannot set up a PC remote connection to the camera on your camera change the USB connection to PC remote okay option Let's go into USB. God, it's been so long since I've done it, I don't know where it is. And that's the joys of using Capture One because it just is, it's just straightforward. Um, USB multi, so USB connection, yeah, it seems like that's connected on the right one. So let's connect that back. <laughs> this is this is it exactly it and it show it's so difficult like look the the process i have to go through to get this working is so difficult it, it you know it's just not plug and play as a professional that's what you want you want things to work and this is why so many people move to apple because it works it works straight away you don't have to mess around with all these things to get things working uh, change the USB connection to PC remote okay right we're in that setting um, USB LAN we'll go single power supply uh, no. Cool, right, I'm in that setting. So that setting is on and it's working. So now, cannot set up a PC remote connection. So I've reset my computer, I've unplugged everything just because, because it's not working. And that's like the first thing you do when things aren't working. You're like, right, I've installed a new piece of software. I will shut my computer down, I'll restart it, I'll do that sort of stuff, just to try and get things working. So. Let's go back, let's click on this remote. Okay, so the remote camera is not connected. Select PC remote in USB connections on your camera and then connect your camera. So if I turn on my camera, I go into my options. And yes, as you can see here, I'll show you this camera. It's doing that, it's, it's ready to go. It is set up. Um, so yeah, so I've, so I've done that. that. What it's asking me to do is done. So I'm gonna plug this USB cable in and I'm gonna click, okay. Now I'm hoping that should be as ready to go. So if I go back and click remote, ah, yes, it's working. So I've had to turn my computer on, turn it off again to get it to that point. Okay, cool. So we've got live view. You can see that now. Yes, it's working. Okay, that's cool. So we're with that stage through. So that's better. Still not great. Um, okay, so now we need to open up Lightroom. And you know, Lightroom is a great editing piece of software. But if you are a Sony shooter, this is the limitation of it. There is no it doesn't talk to each other. There isn't a direct high does yeah. There isn't a direct way of them working, and that's so frustrating. You don't want to have to download three or four pieces of different software to be able to get a solution. It's just not the right thing to do. So I'm going to go in auto import settings. Uh, I've selected that. That's cool. Excuse my cat. This is Darcy. Right now that's all done. Let's go into this remote camera and we want to set up a tool, grid, photo, camera settings. Right, now where do, save settings, so that's what we want to do. So where do we want it to save? Click on save settings, let me close some of these parameters. Save settings. Okay, where do we want it to save these images? I'm going to change that folder. 
And as I said to you, it isn't a direct import. It's basically you save to a folder using this remote software provided by Sony, and then Lightroom auto imports from said folder that you're importing into. So it isn't you. Right, here we go. So let's choose desktop, auto import. Yep, that's the one we want. Okay, so now we've got that all set up. That should be good to go. Now I'll go back into Lightroom and I will take a picture. Hopefully, uh, okay, we've got that picture. Yes, there we go. So that's now firing it into Lightroom. But let's look at the speed. So I'm going to take a picture now. Bearing in mind, it has to save it to the folder, then Lightroom has to look in that folder and pull it out of that folder. In the meanwhile, you've got this third party piece of software that keeps on flagging up every time you take a picture. As a Sony user and a professional photographer, that's just not good enough. And that is one of the reasons I moved to Capture One Pro. And yeah, now there is Capture One Pro 11.1, which is phenomenal. If you are considering Capture One Pro as a Sony shooter, you can use my code, which you'll see down at the bottom here, AMB. L-U-K-E will get you 10% off of any Capture One Pro solution. So that video was a little bit longer than what I wanted it to be and mainly because I had to import into Lightroom. If I was just doing it on Capture One, we would have been over in less than a minute. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Tune into some of my other videos if you found this one useful. And if you've got any questions, please pop them into the box below. Take care.